Blame is not a strategy for a meaningful life. Blame is not a strategy for greatness. There's no pride that comes from blame. Self-esteem does not come from what people say about you. Self-esteem comes from what you experience about yourself. That's why I'm here talking to you right now. It's getting people to be free and alive and have the level of fulfillment to, that they deserve to have. I know they desire, but I also believe they deserve to have. But to deserve to have it, you got to do certain things. You've been hypnotized by a culture of weakness. If someone can get your goat, if someone can piss you off, if someone can make you feel less than, grow. If you're not happy, you're not growing in some area. And usually it's a place where you're blaming you're pointing the finger. Don't get me wrong. People can be unfair, unjust. That's for sure happens. But you can't control that. You can't make it not happen. What you have to do is become stronger than any of it so you're free. Freedom comes from growth. Freedom does not come from control. Now, if you focus on what's missing all the time and what you can't control, you're going to be depressed. Your depression is not a Zoloft deficiency. It is the fact that you were doing something in your mind that is producing that depression. And if you constantly focus on what's missing and what you can't control, you tend to focus more on things in the past. Choice is a gift. It's always there. You can choose what you focus on and what you focus on is what you're going to experience. You can focus on things that make you suffer. You can focus on things that make you grateful. The mindset has to be destroy any limitation and move forward, move forward, move forward. There is a way, move forward. If you don't experience life, you experience the life you focus on. And what you focus on is based on beliefs and values. Whatever you believe, you tend to see that. Progress equals happiness. If you keep growing, you're gonna feel alive. And if you keep growing, you're gonna have more to give. And when you're growing and giving is when life is magnificent. It doesn't matter how many statues, Oscars they give you or Emmys or how much money you have in the bank. So it's really an inner game. And I think that's what's missing for us today. Your growth is the only limit to your happiness. You're not in the place of being overweight because you lost your job. So stop the bullshit. Blame. Blame is not a strategy for a meaningful life. Blame is not a strategy for greatness. So you got to resolve that, number one. See, someone can tell your whole life you're a piece of crap, and a part of you can go, you're full of it. I'm going to show you. Lots of people have done that. They never bought it. Or someone can tell you you're beautiful your whole life. You go, I'm not really beautiful. So what people tell you doesn't matter at all. It's what you stack. It's what you assemble. It's what you create. It's the habit of what you put in your head. And today I don't blame you because we got a whole culture that's always blaming somebody else for something in their life. But blame is not a strategy for pride. That's why you listen to these blaming people. They're all angry all the time. What's the one thing to focus on if you can only focus on one? I think it's smart to focus on one thing primarily. But then the answer would be whichever thing you're most desirous of changing. Whatever thing is giving you the most pain. So if it's your relationship, I'd go full force on that. Now, in the world we're in today, you know, you don't usually have the, the privilege of going, okay, I want to work on just being happy. Well, I can train you to be happy while hell's breaking loose. You probably have to work on both your business or financial side and some personal side. I would be working on both. And to me, the way to attack that, if you're not sure which area is to start with the body. I always teach physiology first. Change the body, you'll change the emotions. If you change the emotions, you'll change your decisions, you'll change the quality of your life. Because the quality of your life is your emotions. It's not what you get, you can have a billion dollars and commit suicide, people have done it. You can have beautiful relationships and commit suicide. You can have people loving you and be sad all the time. Our pattern of emotion is our home. And you have to upgrade your home. You have to train it, and one way to train it is the emotion comes from the way you move, the way you breathe, the way you speak. When I used to be depressed, and I don't get it anymore, I just took it out of my life. I even took the language of it out of my life because the words you create, create a biochemical response. But when I did that decades ago, because I was like having those thoughts like, is there a reason to still be here? That kind of crazy shit in your head. I got out of it by using anger originally. I'd much like, sometimes if somebody's really sad or depressed, I'll make them angry. People are like, what's he doing? He's making them angry. Because angry is much more resourceful than depressed. From anger, right. I can get you to laughter. I can get you to taking action. I, so, and then gradually I got why I didn't need anger. It was about growth. It was about contribution. It was about meaning. Is it really that the, the entrenched depression is just the way that people think? Or is there something so real to trauma that it's sending you into a neurochemical cascade that you can't get out of in any simple way. $20 billion did some of the most interesting studies in the world and we didn't move uh, you know, one person out of depression. The bottom line is biochemistry is part of it, but it is related to what we focus on and what we feel. I can change your biochemistry in a heartbeat 
Close your eyes and have you imagine one thing. I can disrupt you, put, produce fear. Close your eyes, produce something else. We can produce a parasympathetic effect, a calming effect. So you cannot separate the mind and the body. They're together. And so my approach is both. I believe in physiology first, but it isn't just biochemical. It's the way you move. It's the way you breathe. It's the way you gesture. If I said to you, there's a depressed person behind curtain number one over here, and I'll give you a $100,000 donation to your favorite charity if you can describe their posture, Everyone knows, what's their posture like? Where, where's their head? Down. Down, where's the shoulders? Slouched. Are they breathing full or shallow? Shallow. That's right. Are they talking loud or quiet? Soft. Fast or slow? Slow. But if you take that same person, I don't care what's going on with them, and you put their shoulders back, and you have them breathe different, and they speak at a different tempo, and they move, their biochemistry changes like that. So you gotta shift the way the body's being used, but then also you have to create a compelling future. So that's why, you know, I really believe exercise is one of the most important elements, pushing someone beyond their normal comfort zones physiologically, while you're simultaneously are working on their head, creating something. So you need strong physiology, you need a really clear focus, because you're only experiencing what you focus on. You need something that gets you to move forward. And like, I feel so bad for, the generation today, you know, Z generation millennials, because so many of them are now talking about not even having children because of the exaggeration of the problems. We've always had problems. I remember we we're gonna run out of oil that where the, the ozone was gonna be destroyed. We've always had these challenges and we've always learned to adapt to these challenges, whatever those challenges may be. But people today think these problems are forever because we've had some times here that we've never had where we literally shut down the whole world and had people trapped in their homes and that has an effect on people because they don't have a compelling future. There's something inside you that's bigger than anything that's ever happened to you, that ever could happen to you. And tapping in and finding that part of yourself is how you get someone to have sustained strength. So they have a reason to do it, a compelling future, something they're going for. And it's gotta be a compelling future about more than just getting by. That's not compelling or surviving or doing okay. You know, the secret to anyone who succeeded is they found something they care about more than themselves. As human beings, if you get in your head, you're dead. Almost all of us can find something to be upset about. That's the nature of the mind. The mind is constantly dissecting things, separating, comparing. But when you look at back and you take a look at somebody's life and you look at the totalitary aspect of what am I here to serve? What am I here to give? What am I being called to for life? Those are the people that, you know, were in concentration camps and survived. You know, if you read Man's Search for Meaning, Viktor Frankl, one of my favorite people on earth, right? This entire piece was they had a will to live because they had a compelling future. They said, I'm going to live so that I can tell this story so it'll never happen again. They suffered the most intense suffering, but they made it through it because they had a compelling future. So identity and compelling future are the ultimate things that shape people. Why are they still depressed if they're taking a depressant? Because all the depressant does is numb you, but they're still focusing what's missing. They're still focused on what they can't control. They're still focused on past or present that's not the way they wanted to be or making up a future that's scary. Well, you're gonna be depressed no matter what unless you take control of those factors. I don't see it as a rationale. I see it as a gift. Choice is a gift, it's always there. You can choose what you focus on and what you focus on is what you're gonna experience. You can focus on things that make you suffer. You can focus on things that make you grateful.